Claire Slaney's presentation is Regulation and the Search for Certainty. Claire is a counsellor, psychotherapist and supervisor based in London. You can find out more about Claire on our website at clearslaneycounselling.com. So that's clearslaneycounselling.com. Over to you, Claire, for your presentation. Thank you. And what I would like to do, because there's quite a bit of information just to cram in, is just read, if that's okay. Um, as John has said about the other presentations, it'll all be available and people can get in touch with me uh, and ask more questions. So, during this talk, there'll be a striking and important image that I've purposefully used because it illuminates everything this talk is about. The purpose of this talk is to describe what regulation is and how it's applied in our professions. But beyond that, it is to draw your attention to status anxiety, something that every person and every group in every gathering of human beings experiences. To ask you to think about how status anxiety may be playing out in our groups, and to ask you to consider who ultimately benefits from your anxiety about your status. There's a great deal of confusion about whether counsellors and psychotherapists are regulated or not. This is partly because systems of regulation across professions are in constant evolution and partly because a really simple script about regulation has been repeated so often by so many people in positions of power that very few of us question it at all. The bottom line is, as the House of Lords Select Committee says at the very beginning of this report, that regulation is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Regulation is primarily a philosophical position that becomes dumbed down or misused, depending on who's implementing it. So, who regulates the regulators? The Professional Standards Authority for Health and Social Care oversees the regulation and registration of health and social care regulators. And in turn, they are accountable to Parliament via the Privy Council and the Health and Social Care Committee. These are really high status groups within Parliament. The ultimate aim of all profession-specific regulation. We've been told that Scoped will protect the public against the wicked £25 Groupon Council, but there is no data on how many £25 Groupon Councillors there are or how many may be practising. From Aristotle to Condoleezza Rice, using a common enemy to unite even the oldest of foes is from a very old and extremely blunt playbook. Why do you want vulnerable people to be exposed to harm is a sad move, but it works when people can't be bothered to think about what they are being told. The Guild Wars will never end. If there's no difference between a counsellor and a psychotherapist, then those psychotherapists who've trained for six years, gained experience in a forensic setting and have worked a 30 client hour week are going to feel cheated when they know that some counsellors trained for three years and completed 100 or so client facing hours. If there is a difference between counsellors and psychotherapists, then counsellors who trained on a good faith, properly rigorous course are going to be cheated. If, in some fantasy land, a new term is created for both counsellors and psychotherapists, within minutes an MA will be created, then a PhD. We are by no means the only profession that feels status anxiety. Right now, the same government is consulting yet again on regulation because it wants to reduce it this time. The PSA and the HCPC adapt in responses to changes in society. All regulators, the General Medical Council, the NMC, the Engineering Council, Financial Reporting Council, all of them alter in responses to changes in society, in responses to cases that they hear, in responses to new laws, in response to the news. You can bet that Grenfell has had a far greater impact on the culture of regulation of materials and people than any law could ever manage. Regulation is not a one-time event. It is in constant evolution, and it is only as good as the people running it.